Thanks for tuning in to 88.9 at night on WERS. My name is Malcolm. This is the Music is for Life show. And today we got the guest, the one and only Aaron Cohen. What's up, Aaron? How you doing? What's up? How you doing? I'm good, man. What brings you into the studio today? Uh, we're out here in Boston for a show at uh, Middle East tonight. I mm-hmm. uh, just released the tape yesterday, Merc. So I uh, came out here to celebrate that. And then on Friday, we're going to celebrate that in New York. Dope, dope. So let's get let's let's before we get into that, let's talk about you in general. So what was it like? You're from Seattle. What was it like growing up and being a fan of rap in Seattle? Um, I think a big chunk of my generation is like raised on rap, mm-hmm. no matter where they're from. You know. Yeah. Uh, the biggest rapper out of Seattle when I was a kid, like was you know. At that point, it was Sir Mix a lot. <laughs> <It was laughs> I didn't even know that actually. Yeah, <laughs> he's got that old cover art where it's like yeah. the, the Space Needle is his dick, and he's standing on the city skyline. Oh wow, <laughs> that was serious. Um, he's got that song Seattle. Oh, what about cursing? cursing? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. he's got that song Seattle ain't bullshitting, uh, which we liked a lot. And my posse on Broadway. It's kind of <laughs> like about all the streets that I grew up right around. That's pretty dope. Uh, but yeah, I mean, my influences weren't really seattle based no the first things i really got into were like i got into illmatic mm-hmm. slim shady lp yeah college dropout those were all around the, i was you know around the same age when i got into those in like chronic 2001 yeah i was going to ask you about your west coast influence since you're all the way yeah. over there definitely yeah the west coast is like a totally different feel mm-hmm. and like i being from there like i can enjoy both you know what I mean? yeah like I, because I grew up with some people who, could, who didn't like recognize both. True. You know, like if it didn't sound like the Chronic, like, you know, or if it didn't sound Mac Dre's, big, like that whole right. that thing was bigger. Right. Mm-hmm. No, that's dope. So in an old interview, you said one thing, right? You said one of your goals was to throw a show in Seattle. Have you done this yet? Um, no. Not yet. I gotta, I gotta do that. Like last time I rapped in Seattle was like. A battle when I was like 16. Uh. You know? <laughs> I gotta go back out there. I mean, I've been living here and like building here like crazy. Yeah. yeah. And like cross country to do a show hasn't happened yet, but oh. it makes more sense to do it in Seattle than anywhere else. You right. Know? I can dig it. Please let us know, man, on your process and your progress. Let us know when you get that show, man. I would love to see how you feel about it. I'm gonna let everybody know when I get that show. <laughs> it's funny because listening to music, I would never really know that you were from Seattle. Like, Seattle doesn't really have like a specific sound, like you said about Sir Mix a lot. Mm-hmm. So, how did that come into your development as a rapper? Yeah, I mean, I think there is a Seattle sound mm-hmm. now. Like, you got guys like Blue Scholars who came out, and Macklemore is doing really big things. Uh, and I have Scribes on my mixtape, and mm-hmm. I have a song I'm working on with this guy Saul, who's pretty big over there. I'd say like the Seattle sound like tends to be more organic and like kind of like an indie underground thing yeah but you also have guys like Nacho Picasso right now who are like definitely I'd say more in my lane you know what I mean like okay. more doing internet producers from everywhere who are just doing crazy new stuff yeah so what was the original question no that was it <laughs> <laughs> just how how did that go into uh, developing your sound being from Seattle yeah uh probably like this cynicism and shit like probably like <laughs> could have come from you know yeah. rain okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, but i mean i love seattle it's like the prettiest place ever that's dope that's dope so you're in new york now how did you get all the way from seattle to new york uh people always ask me this and there's really no good reason like <laughs> my sister moved out here and she went to school here mm-hmm. i came out here and was like as cliche as it sounds like i just like love the city and i was like yeah if I'm gonna do music and if I'm gonna do me like I just New York's a place to be. be out here. So I moved to Queens, but I made a mistake. I moved to Farakaway. Which is like <laughs> Why was that a mistake? <laughs> it's like the farthest neighborhood from Manhattan. Yeah. Like literally, like it's Wikipedia, yeah. like it's the farthest. <laughs> so it was like hour and twenty minute train ride to get into the city. Jeez. So I, but I've moved around, I've been in Queens most of the time and then I was in Brooklyn for a little bit. Cool. But yeah, now I mean it's not even an option, like I gotta be there. Cause yeah. Yeah, everything's there right now. No, that's real. So fast forward, you're in New York, and you drop crack. Yeah. Right. So, first of all, I know you get this question all the time. Why'd you call it that? But what was re- what did you want people to get from the crack project? Really, that was like 
crack signifies like when I started taking rap seriously. Because mm-hmm. like, I recorded like some things like, but never really like pushed myself like it was my job, you know. Mm-hmm. And then crack came out because I just kept, I just kept making songs and like I really honestly there was like no underlying concept when I was mm-hmm. doing it. Like it was like all these punchlines I had, like all these stories or whatever I had, like and I just put them all on really whatever beats like <laughs> i mean yeah. i mean i chose on purpose because i liked them but they were like industry beats for the most part yeah. and just used it as my business card right and when it was all finished i was like it just hit me and i was like i should call it crack because really there was no you know what i mean there's no like story being told overall okay there's no theme it's yeah. like this is just the hottest little tidbits i could fill this up with so it's like call it crack get the crack sound bites you know. <laughs> great beat selection though i'll tell you that Thank you. even though the, a lot of them industry that you did great job <laughs> selecting those beats my favorite joint on that track was fat man I yeah. love- <laughs> <laughs> that was like one of the first hooks i ever wrote yeah i like my beats like i like my women <laughs> that's real <laughs> yeah people would scream that shit like real loud <laughs> people like, like that a lot what was your favorite joint on crack uh Maybe coffee and cigarettes, mm-hmm. just because I felt like the the production was kind of futuristic on it. Okay, and it was really I just I don't even know where I got that beat. I like took that beat off. It was like some Cartoon Network shit that we flipped. Um, mm-hmm. I like that one. Up and Down has like yeah, done a lot for me. Like that yeah, song is it's a great song. That song is real catchy. It's one yeah. of those things where I heard it in my head and then it just. And that's the first song you hear on the tape, like that. You just hit you with that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's dope that that really took off. Nah. Yeah, never should have let me go. I love performing that song. Why? I think it's because I get to sing a little bit. Okay. And like, I can't sing, <laughs> but like, I feel like I'm like really performing. Yeah. And like, just forget about like, everybody out there. I'm just like singing the hook, you know? Yeah, that's dope. So this summer, you dropped the video for Helen Keller, you dropped the video for Feminist. And you work with the dude Nicholas Heller. How did you guys produce and some? With us. Huh? And mess with us. And mess with no and mess with the other one. Bring that up later. Right. But uh, that just came out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how did? What's your relationship with Nicholas Heller? You guys seem to have like this certain vision. Your videos are very different from most of the rap videos we see these days. So, what is it? What goes into that relationship, and then uh, creating those visuals? Yeah, he's like he's a really creative guy, mm-hmm. and I like to think that I'm pretty creative. And I saw. I saw some of his videos coming out and just thought, like, that was the route I needed to go, mm-hmm. at least to try. And the first video we actually did was Mess, mess With Us. It was in, okay. The videos are in exact reverse order of, like, oh, but, when we made them. That's yeah. just how things happen. But after that, like, he was just good to work with. Everything went well. He's got great ideas, and, like, we just we could sit down and just talk. Like, I talk to the dude all the time, mm-hmm. so just having that kind of building relationship. Yeah. You've done it before, you know it worked, and, like, yeah. just kept going with it. That's dope. Uh, and we like to try and do something different. You know what I mean? Because it's so cool to just posture right now. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. could, we could just look cool, but I'd rather, like, try and throw people off right. a little bit. <laughs> you know? No, 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 that's pretty dope. You also have very distinctive artwork. What goes into that? The cover art? Yeah. That's all Jebediah Long. Okay. Say that again, Jebba die along, because he did that shit for me twice now. Okay. I owe that guy like at least two shout outs like that. <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, he just, I'm just like paint my face and he just does it really well. No, nah, that's pretty dope. It's very different. He's like, he's a serious artist. Like he's a fine yeah. artist. That's what he does. That's uh, So, Merc is out. Merc. Officially. Yes. It's presented by Mishka, correct? Correct. How did, how did you get that relationship with Mishka to drop your tape? Um, me and some people that I work with just send it to him, and we already had the Helen Keller video. Right. We sent them both, and they the tape and that, and they they had us come in for a meeting, mm-hmm. and they're like, "You want us to do this with you?" And I was like, "Yeah." And that was pretty much it. <laughs> that was simple. Like, well, simple as that. <laughs> I can make it sound more complicated, but no, that's okay. <laughs> that's really what happened. No, that's dope. So let's talk about the beats. The beats on your project, are, as I said before, on the Cry Project, great beat selection, and it's the same on this on the Merc Project. How did what was the process of selecting the beats? That's the craziest part for me. <laughs> like, I go through a lot, like picking out beats. Yeah. Like I really, 
I've had people send me like 80 beats and like I'll just look through all of them and be like sorry you know what <laughs> I mean like and people some people might think I'm a dick I don't know but like <laughs> I just know when I hear it if like the songs just start like coming out and you, I just know when I hear it and I knew I knew that since crack had gotten some yeah. buzz and some love on some blogs yeah. that like that's why I say it was my business card because it gave me the ability to like reach out to producers who were making a little bit of noise themselves mm -hmm. And like they would have something to gain from working with me, mm -hmm. um, and I just just reached out to people who I thought were making cool music. I mean, that's pretty much all I try and do is make it as good as possible. And I wanted it to sound new and relevant, but at the same time, not like get caught up in a specific trend. So, oh. is know? it something you specifically listen for, or is it just a feeling that you get when you're listening to the instrumental? It's more of a feeling, but there's also things like that I'm listening for. Like, yeah. there can be beats that like, okay, I can definitely write to this. Like, mm. there's plenty of boom bap beats that I could, like, okay, this makes me want to write, but it'll have like some super like corny like ass horn in the middle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, or it'll just sound like 30 years old. You know what I mean? And, like, yeah, yeah, I can dig just it. Just because I can rap to that doesn't mean I'm gonna. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> no, I can get it. So, what's your favorite track on Merc? Is that tough question? Is it too soon? <laughs> yeah, I like to see what songs do for me and pick favorites. <laughs> but no, no, no. Really, personal favorite? Yeah. There's a couple, but Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. That song, that's with Gashi. It's produced by his kid, Alex Klinger. Mm -hmm. When we do that song live, yeah, we'll go crazy. Yeah. Like, really crazy. You wouldn't tell. You can't tell on the track because it kind of like it builds up to the hook right and then it has the the screwed down part right but when we do it live the build up is there and then it doesn't die down because it's like six of us on stage screaming and the people right in front of us <laughs> screaming yeah and it's it's like it's intense <laughs> like so i like that um i also like the song i like they don't understand yep but black noise i just think it doesn't really have a, a hook the same way a lot of my songs do or yep. like catch them in, but it's just like a the production on it's awesome. Yeah. And like and it's just like a real tight song. Dope. So I picked three tracks that really stood out to me. If you can just explain what you were thinking when you made those, that'd be perfect, right? So one of the tracks, uh it's a little deeper one, it's called Religion. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking about when you recorded that? Yeah, I got that beat from Yuri Beats. Mm hmm Like right before I got the to mess with us beat that's one of my favorite beats on the tape the religion beat because it just like it's like a song already you know right. partially because it has a sample in there on the hook but also like i could i can listen to that beat right now and like remember what i was feeling like when i wrote this shit. so yeah. it just felt more like it was it kind of like the beat just like draws out like yeah honesty you know what i mean and just kind of like yeah, I'm gonna talk shit right now, but I'm gonna like relax yeah. and like stay in the helm and talk shit from here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, yeah. and like, I don't know. I think the beat itself like evokes emotion, so I just like just chill. You yeah. just went off of that. Yeah. Dope. The next joint was one of my favorite. This is one of my favorite beats. So I'll say unemployment. Unemployment. Yeah. yeah. How was it creating that song? That song, it was like I felt like I needed. I see that song as kind of like linking it to crack a little bit. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, all right, I want to get something that's like boom bap, like and just not even like updated boom. I just want right. like, to just just hit just rap. Like yeah. <laughs> so, so I got that from a kid. Actually, I linked up with through like hype beast forums. I think mm -hmm. uh, I'm not even in the forums, but everyone else is. So uh, <laughs> needle drop and. Uh, I hit him up. I'm like, yo, I want to use this beat. He's like, yeah, just credit me. I was like, all right. You know? <laughs> nah. Simple as that. You got everything. <laughs> it's, you're making it seem so simple to make everything happen. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not. It's a lot. It's like a series of like 30 simple things, you know, every day. Yeah, you true, do to true, make true. Happen. But like, you're right. <laughs> so I got that beat and I knew I wanted AB, AB Go Hard and mm -hmm. Spaceman to be on the tape because they're in ICK. That's my crew. Right. It's inner city kids. Mm -hmm. Um, it just seemed like the right one to do it on because it wasn't we all have like super distinct styles as you can tell in that yeah. and 
AB's like the crazy like he always draws like ODB comparisons. Mm-hmm. Where as spaceman's on like intellectual nihilist like I don't give a fuck like acid head type stuff. Yeah. And and I'm on my thing so. We need, you know, to tie it all together, you need something we're just rapping. So, right. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, and it's true. You know what I mean? Like, I'm unemployed, and, like, everything really started to pop off right. when I lost my job. Yeah. So, and I've been working way harder than I ever worked with, you know, a job. Dope. So, yeah. Dope. And then the last joint is, uh, look what they made me, <laughs> look what they done to my song, Ma. Yeah. That song is cool. That song is a Melanie song, mm-hmm. originally. Okay. So she's the one who did like, I got a brand new pair. And yep. I, so that song was like my, my mom loves that song, but my aunt really loved that song. Wow. And she passed away and she always used to play it in the car. Mm. So I got that beat from my friend uh, Mario. And I don't know, I wrote it in a song, you know, it's got like, there's emotion like in the beat. It's got like more of like a right. rock feel and I, it just worked. Like, I don't even know if people get it. Like, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think people know where that comes from, but right. it's more from me, so whatever. That's dope. So, you got two projects under your belt, man. What's next for you? Third project? <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know. It's like, with each, everything I do, there's like more opportunities coming up. Mm-hmm. So, I'm just staying open to like, whatever. I just, I'm always making music. So, I already got like, know that I already got Songs. but like i just i don't know what project exactly they're gonna be on who's that it's gonna come out with but like right now i'm doing merch mishka shows Dope. making music and like everything just gotta get steadily crazier like that's what that's what it's about you know that's dope. That's dope. That's one. Thank you for coming through, Aaron. Man, we appreciate you. Welcome to Boston. Welcome to WERS, man. Where can the people keep in touch with you at? Uh, a couple places. You can go to facebook.com backslash Aaron Cohen music or you can go to uh, or you can just go to Aaron Cohen music.com I forgot I just bought that <laughs> that's where my tumblr just turned to my website um yeah or twitter twitter's good do twitter uh Mr. Aaron S. Cohen uh that's my twitter I like these coffee cup <laughs> you like that innovative Steve, that's, that's genius <laughs> I would've done it <laughs> We're trying to be innovative here. College Radio. (laughs) It's all good. One more time for Aaron Cohen. Thanks for coming through, man. Make sure you keep it locked to 88.9 at night on WERS.